that the collapses of the Twin Towers and Building Number 7 had to have been examples of controlled demolition brought about by thousands of explosives placed throughout each of the buildings. No foreign terrorist could have obtained the kind of access to the buildings this would have required. One reason for concluding that the three buildings were brought down by explosive is the very fact that they did collapse. High-rise steel frame buildings have never, before or after 9-11, been caused to collapse by fire. Even when, as in the Philadelphia fire of 1999 and the Madrid fire of February of this year, the fires were much larger, much hotter, and much longer lasting than any of the fires in the World Trade Center. The second reason is the specific nature of the collapses, each feature of which points to explosives. For example, the buildings collapsed straight down and at virtually free fall speed, as in controlled demolitions. And then the rubble smoldered for months afterwards. With regard to the Twin Towers in particular, many people in the building said that they saw, they felt, or heard explosions. Virtually all the concrete of these enormous structures was pulverized into very fine dust. This was the South Tower. This was 104, 106 stories tall. This is what is left. Up there was the North Tower. And you look. And you see, and there's no concrete. There's very little concrete. All you see is aluminum and steel. What happened to the concrete? The concrete was pulverized. And I was down here Tuesday, and it was like you were on a foreign planet. All of lower Manhattan, not just this site, from river to river, there was dust powder two, three inches thick. The concrete was just uh, pulverized. Try this. Get a piece of concrete and drop it uh, a little over a 1,000 feet and see if it pulverizes into very fine dust. It won't happen. Much of this dust, along with steel and, and aluminum, was blown out horizontally from the buildings several hundred feet. Most of the steel beams and columns came down in sections about 30 feet long, conveniently ready to be loaded onto trucks and pools of molten, molten steel were found beneath the rubble. This is how it's been since day one. Oh, it's unbelievable. And this is six weeks later, almost six weeks later. And as we get closer to the center of this, it gets hotter and hotter. It's probably 1,500 degrees. We've had some small windows into um, what we thought was the core at some point, and it looked like a, uh, an oven, you know? It was just roaring inside. And it's just a bright, bright reddish-orange color. These and even more effects point to the existence of very powerful, precisely placed explosives. A third thing supporting the theory of controlled demolitions is evidence of a deliberate cover-up. If the building steel columns and beams had indeed been broken by explosives, an examination of the steel would have revealed this fact. However, although it is normally a federal offense to remove anything from a crime scene, the steel was quickly loaded onto trucks and put on ships headed for Asia to be melted down. I will mention one more example of the cover-up. Insofar as there is an official story as to why the towers collapsed, it is the pancake theory according to which the floors above the destruction caused by the airplanes collapsed on the floor below, and then those floors collapsed on the floor below that, and then it pancaked all the way down. Now, even if this theory were remotely plausible, can you imagine it pancaking at free fall speed? <laughs> uh, 
The other problem is what happened to the 47 massive steel columns that constituted the core of each of these twin towers. They were the weight-bearing structures of each tower. Those 47, even if the pancake theory were true, those 47 steel beams should have been sticking up at least several hundred feet into the air, just like the old phonographs where sometimes the 78 records would collapse, but the spindles still sticking up in the air. You should have had 47 spindles still sticking up in the air. Well, what did the 9-11 Commission report do about that problem? It, it avoided the problem incredibly by simply denying the existence of these columns, even though those columns... I'm not making this up. These, col the, the, these columns were the unique feature of these towers when they were first built. So, the commission report, after saying falsely that most of the weight of each tower was borne by the steel columns in its exterior walls, this supposedly authoritative report said the interior core of the buildings was a hollow steel shaft in which elevators and stairwells were grouped. Such a desperate lie is a sure sign of a cover-up. In any case, when we look at all these features of the collapses, the idea that they could have been caused by the impact of the airplanes plus the resulting fires is ridiculous. This was even clearer with regard to building number seven, which wasn't hit by any airplane and yet it came down about 4, 5.30 that afternoon. Its collapse remains so impossible to explain, except as controlled demolition, that the 9-11 Commission report did not even mention it, as if the collapse of a 47-story building was not worthy of comment. And it only had fires on floors number 7 and 12 of 47 stories.